Using horses in warfare as cavalry is a stupid idea and that's what I'm going to talk to you about in this video which has been sponsored by our friends at The Great Courses Plus. More of them later. Now, I want you to cast your mind back. Back to when the horse had just been domesticated. I don't know exactly when that was and nobody else does either. The figure 3000 BC is very often cited but um, 4500 to 2000 perhaps is, is closer to the truth in that it's somewhere in there probably. Uh, it's a bit vague. Um, when exactly an animal becomes domesticated um, is uh, debatable too. Um, a lot of people will say it's when the animal requires mankind looking after it to survive. Uh, another uh, definition is that it's when um, man is selectively breeding, controlling the breeding, if you like, of the, of, of the species and selectively breeding for, for those traits which suit man. So which dogs get to breed are the ones which are, whose behaviours suit working with men and which horses get to breed are those of the type that men want rather than other horses. So um, somewhere in that period the horse gets domesticated. Um, but I want you to remember that, that uh, you know, a horse was of course before that a wild animal and when it's just been domesticated it's still fairly wild and not very different from its wild ancestors. So its instincts are still those of a wild animal and if you've ever been to a rodeo uh, you'll perhaps uh, be well aware that even modern horses if they've not been trained um, are very reluctant to have people ride them on their backs and if you try jumping on the, the back of some other wild animal they jump on the back of a, a wild zebra or ostrich or uh, buffalo or whatever and you'll you'll find that it really objects to your being there quite strongly so if some smart aleck said back then hey I've got this brilliant idea why don't we ride these things into battle well there are a couple of uh, possible uh, reactions to that one might be that people said wow that's a brilliant idea why didn't we think of it ourselves we've got to try it but I think it's more likely that they said don't be such an idiot I mean, it, it's ridiculous the idea that you could ride a horse into battle. Now, if you're, if you're an infantryman, you've got both feet on the ground, you can control your movements, you can have a nice big shield, a big spear, and you know exactly uh, when you're going to move and in what direction because you are in control of those movements. And you can wear lots of armour, and you can, if you fall over, you can just get back up again. If you're on a horse, things are completely different. Uh, how are you going to stay on that horse? How are you going to get the horse to bear the weight of you and all that armour? Because early horses, of course, were much smaller than the, the large things we have today. They're, they're ponies, really. And a large man in armour would be quite a burden to such a horse. And um, how is he going to stay on it? Now, I have once been bareback riding, and so I can I can tell you that it's... it's boy, you have to grip with your thighs. Um, and the back of a horse is very rounded and its fur is really quite skiddy. Got to remember Velcro with all the little hooks hasn't been invented yet so you've got nothing like that to hold you on. Um, and you wouldn't want to tie yourself onto the horse with a bit of rope or anything because if you did fall then you'd be dragged and that would be horrendous. Dragged and kicked and you, oh the injuries. So you don't want to do that. You want to be able to get off the horse safely but not fall off the horse. Um, you want to get off when you choose. Um, so if the horse is galloping along and suddenly stops, you don't want to go sailing over its neck and head and land on the ground in front of it in a big heap for the enemy then to just go stab. You don't want that. Um, another thing that's really difficult about uh, the horses, you know, if you think about it back then, is um, that they're so scared. I mean, even horses today, if you've been riding much at all, you'll know that horses spook at the most bizarre things. You could be uh, riding down the road, a car goes vroom, straight past you, much too close. This idiot, you may shout something rude after the driver, but he won't hear you. Um, uh, but the horse is fine. And then a few more yards down the down the road, he goes, <gasps> Chris Packet, Chris Packet, huh, huh, and the horse is, is, is panicking because it's a Chris Packet, it's a Chris Packet, it's a blue one, it's a blue one, and it, that should be salt and vinegar, but I bet that was cheese and onion, and that's just so wrong. And oh, Chris Packet, Chris Packet, uh, tractor goes thundering past, doesn't bother the horse at all, but Chris Packet, ah! The most bizarre things will spook a horse. They're they're very timorous things, and they're not. Uh, they're quite intolerant to pain. They don't like fighting. Um, they don't like even treading on on people. If if uh, in battle there are bodies lying on the ground, horses don't want to tread on bodies, even dead bodies. Um, so the idea of riding one into battle would probably, to the first people who heard it, sound like a really amazingly stupid idea. How are you going to control it? Well, I'll put a bit in its mouth. Okay, so you put a bit in its mouth and it spits it out. 
Okay, well, obviously that's going to require a bit more work, but you'll think of a way maybe to control it to, with, with some sort of harness that goes around its snout, perhaps, and a couple of ropes. So it won't be that great, but you'll have some steering control, maybe, if you spend an awful long time training this horse. But then, are you going to ride into battle on your own? Because that just means you, you get there before everyone else, and you're really conspicuous, and they're going to shoot you first, and your horse is a really big, vulnerable, unarmoured target, and it's intolerable, intolerant to pain. If anyone hits it, it's going to bolt, and then you're probably going to fall off, or you're going to go hurtling across the battlefield on your own. How is that any help to anyone? And uh, you could say, all right, well, maybe if we train up loads and loads and loads of guys, we have a cavalry force, then we can rumble across the plain, plains and, and, and scare the, 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 the wits out of the enemy with this thunderous hooves and, and shaking of ground and so forth. Well, yeah, that, that could happen. Then again, you might just get the ironic applause as you all then scatter across the plain and fall off. And the few of you who are left realize that you can't possibly take on a, an infantry uh, unit because... How do you actually fight on a horse? If you ride up to an infantry unit, you're then, you've got infantrymen all around you very, very quickly, and they've got so much to aim at, and your, your angles of attack, well, essentially you've got down, and that's it. So it's fairly easy to work out uh, where you have to put your shield in order to parry, and uh, it, it, you're hopeless. It, it, what's, it, what's it going to achieve riding cavalry into battle? And it seems that nobody did ride cavalry into battle for really quite a long time after the, the domestication of the horse. But something that they did use horses for was pulling things. Now, horses are very good at that. You can get them to pull carts and so forth and various heavy loads, and that was something that was useful in everyday life, in, in farming and, and building and so forth. And you could, of course, train them to pull chariots. Now, chariots were used in warfare for quite a long time before cavalry appeared. Um, we don't know exactly when the first chariots were, but again, big round number, about 2000 BC. And they got more and more prevalent, it seems, in certainly in Middle Eastern warfare until around 1300 BC, around the Battle of Kadesh, for instance, which we know about uh, through uh, historical reports of it, which involved vast numbers of chariots. That seems to be the peak. And... By the time Caesar invaded Britain, uh, the, the Celts in Britain were still using chariots, but it seems that they were the exception. And the, the Gauls uh, in what is today France, it seems, weren't uh, still using chariots. Um, the last mention, I think, of uh, warfare, certainly in the West, uh, using chariots was uh, Mons Grapius, I think. Anyway, um, one reason that you would get a horse to pull something like a chariot is because they are small. If you've got a very small horse that's not very powerful and you put a big weight on top of it and you know, of a guy with armor and so forth, then it's quite a burden and it's, it's going to have a, a struggle galloping along with you on its back. But if you put your weight uh, on the ground via a wheel, and uh, make the ground and the chariot bear the weight, and all the horse has to do is get the wheels to turn round, ah, then that's different. And a couple of horses could pull you really, really fast. Chariots are going to be a lot faster than cavalry because they're not burdened. Every time they, they do the, the up part of the gallop, they don't have to lift you and your armor up uh, each time. Instead, they can just gallop forwards, pulling, uh, as long as the terrain is, of course, favorably flat, um, pulling this, this light, a spoked wheeled basket behind it with you in it and then you could go really really fast and perhaps fight from there and it seems that people did. Now uh, in the works of Homer of course we read of loads and loads of heroes rushing around the, 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 the plains outside Troy on their chariots and if the Trojan War happened, which it might not have, and if it did happen around 1250 BC, which it might not have, but that's the that's a, a commonly uh, estimated date for the Trojan War, then there would be no cavalry. So all those references in your translation uh, to cavalry of Homer uh, are probably referring to those parts of the army that used horses, which is chariots, really. Um, it does seem, perhaps, that messengers and people like that, not riding into battle, uh, were used before cavalry as an arm of an army uh, arrived. So it could be that in ancient Egypt you would have a couple of guys on horses riding to deliver messages that's a little bit faster, but ride at the enemy and fight from horseback? <laughs> no, 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 that would be ridiculous. On something as timid and vulnerable on, uh, as a horse, and uh, of which you can fall so easily, so how do you keep yourself on a horse? Well, um, one way is to uh, use a saddle, which 
helps a bit. Um, you're not quite as skiddy as the horse's back. The first good evidence we have for saddles is around 700 BC in places like Assyria. Um, they may, of course, be older than that. Um, I suspect they are a bit, but uh, that's the first really good evidence we have for them. Uh, but the saddle on its own isn't really enough to, uh, to turn you into a cavalryman. Um, when do stirrups arrive? Well, the stirrups don't arrive until quite a lot later, uh, more recently than perhaps you'd realize. Now, um, I've read of loops of rope that would go around the big toes of a rider in India as early as the second century, end of the second century BC, uh, but that's not really a true uh, stirrup as we would know it. If you just have straps or ropes going to something like a loop around your toes, uh, that puts a lot of strain on in one small part of the horse's back and the horse will get sores from that. It's not terribly practical. To get stirrups to work properly you have to have a pretty solid, preferably framed saddle um, which then puts the air, it puts the strain from, the, uh, from the, the stirrups, the downward strain, translate that into a broad area over a large bit of the horse's back so it doesn't get those sores. Um, now uh, when does the true um, uh, stirrup get invented uh, as we know it today? Well, probably China, some around 400 and something um, BC seems to be, no sorry, AD, AD seems to be the time. And uh, why? Well, uh, some versions of history will say that the first stirrups were used in China so that old frail people could get onto their horse. So it was just a mounting aid. And we have some reason to believe that uh, Sarmatians, some couple of hundred years later, uh, were getting onto their horses, perhaps when they were wearing heavy armour, using one stirrup. There's a stirrup just on one side, so they would use it uh, to get up onto the horse, and once on, the stirrup's job was done. It wasn't actually a riding aid, it was just a mounting and perhaps dismounting aid. Um, so is there some other way you can stay on a horse? Well, yes there is, but first I want to tell you a little bit about the Great Courses Plus, our sponsors. So. Uh, the Great Courses Plus is an online service uh, to which you can subscribe and they have loads and loads of lectures from lecturers from all around the world that with a definite bias towards um, uh, American universities and these lecturers talk about all sorts of topics including lots of science and history and literature and art and so forth and you can watch uh, these tip-top uh, lecturers at any time uh, you like, day or night, and there will be no exams or anything, and of course new lectures are being added all the time. Now if you click the um, link uh, in the description to this video, you will uh, then be taken to a landing page, and from there you can get one month's free trial. Well, so why not try it? It's one month's free trial of The Great Courses Plus, or you can type in The Great Courses Plus, which is this, uh, which is appearing on your screen now, and that's another way you can get there. So. The Great Courses Plus. Why not give them a go? Now, back to saddles. So, there is another way, and it seems that this other way was developed by the Celts. Now, the Celts then later got copied by the Romans, and sometimes this uh, saddle is known as a Roman saddle, but sometimes it's known as a Celtic saddle, or a Romano-Celtic saddle, whichever you, are, whichever you prefer. So, instead of stirrups, which are sometimes described as a great revolution that made feudalism possible, stirrups made the knight possible, the heavily armoured guy who could fight from horseback possible. Really? I suspect not, because of these four pommeled um, saddles. There are a few versions, but by and large what you have is uh, a pommel in front of your right thigh, a pommel in front of your left thigh, and maybe two behind you, quite close up against your backside, or maybe a, a wall behind you that just keeps you uh, firmly in place. Now, how do these work? Well, um, the idea is that as you gallop along and you see a target, oh, I'm going to hit him, and you lean out and hit him, this is a big problem. What happens next if you're a cavalryman? How do you get back up onto the horse again? If you uh, are riding bareback and you lean over like this and whack someone, then, oh, oh, there goes my perishing center of gravity. Goodbye, everyone. You're probably going to fall off the horse. You have to be able to force your weight back up onto the horse somehow. The reins aren't going to help you. Uh, now if you have a stirrup that's firmly attached to a saddle, what you can do is you can push down on the stirrup on that side and uh, get yourself back up on the horse. Or if you're, wearing, if you're riding on a four pommeled horse, you can lift your thigh on that side, which then um, contacts the, the pommel. And no you don't, 
I'm completely wrong. I'm sorry to ignore that. It's the other side, isn't it, of course. So if I lean into my right, I bring up my left thigh against the pommel on that side, and that levers me back up onto the horse. So if I lean to the left, I bring up my right thigh, and that brings me back up onto the horse with no need for stirrups. And if I thrust with, a, uh, with some weapon like a spear forwards, then the force that uh, is translated to me in recoil along that forces me backwards against the rear pommels of the, saw, of, of the saddle, which then keep me in place and I don't go flying off the back of the horse. So I can lean to my right, lever myself back up, lean to my left, lever myself back up and thrust forwards and stay on the horse. So shock cavalry, armoured cavalry with, with swords and spears and so forth that can go in against infantry and other cavalry and fight and stay on the horseback is possible with this Celtic or is it Roman, Roman saddle. And that's long before the stirrup. Now, the Romans did, in fact, in later periods, encounter enemies using stirrups, and they didn't straight away adopt the stirrup, it seems. So, you know, maybe that's because their system worked, and they'd been using it for quite some while, and they saw no particular reason to change it. The reconstructions of these saddles are based, so far as I know, on the first reconstruction, which was by Peter Connolly. And um, he came round to my university and lectured. He had, um, one, he had his reconstruction saddle on a, a vaulting horse, and he showed off by vaulting onto it and oomph, landing in it. You've got to remember there were shorter horses, so that was easier. And uh, he then demonstrated how you can lean one way and leave yourself back up, lean the other way and leave yourself back up. Um, and he had based his reconstruction on finds of the leather covers, which have all their stitching, and the stitching had been stretched this way and that, and he'd looked at how it had been stitched, and. He worked out what shape the, 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 the object used to be once when it was in use. Um, and there are also uh, bronze or brass fittings of metal which go onto the pommels. And from these clues, he constructed a wooden frame, put his uh, pommels and, and, and brass bits and leather over the top, and he found he got it to work. And today there are lots of people who have made reconstructions of these pommeled saddles, tried them out on horses, trained their horses to accept them, and they find that they work fine. Uh, which of course then begs the question, why do people start using stirrups? Well, uh, I don't know. I genuinely don't know. Um, but I can say that for most of the time that there have been domesticated horses, cavalry, has been a really stupid idea. Lindy Bears!